Um, first of all, one of the nicest things about Excel is that it has the ability to actually connect to SQL Server Analysis Services. So you can connect to your cube data or your BI data and analyze it directly in Excel. When our latest um, release of Google, I'm sorry, when our release, release of our Google application, we actually give you some similar functionality. What we do is we offer a tool that enables you to upload a cube or a subset of a cube and analyze it from within Google Docs. The nice thing about this solution is that it lets you collaborate and share with the same ease that we, as we just demonstrated. So let's take a look at how this can be done. First of all, to um, to uh, create the cube file, we recommend that you use this application called Cube Slice. Now, what this application is going to do, uh, we're going to take a look at it in just a second here. It's we're going to attach to our SQL Server Analysis Services database, select a particular database and a particular cube within that database, and then just make a few settings so that we can. Um, uh, tell the tool which pieces of data we're interested in um, including in our in our local file. Okay, so um, if I go to Cube Slice Creator here, the first thing it's going to ask me is which server am I working on? And this is actually the server that I'm working on here. I'm going to get a list of databases and then I'm going to select one of the databases. When I make that selection, the tool goes out and gets a list of cubes and I can see I have only one cube here. So I'm going to add this cube to my list of uh, cubes that I'm working with. Now, its next step is to actually tell the tool which pieces of information I want to include in my local file. It's quite simple. I know there's a lot of text here and I'm not going to go through it all right now, but it's a, there's a simple method of including or excluding different uh, measures or attributes, hierarchies, and members, and so on. You can determine which of these uh, pieces of data are actually included in your final local file. When you get those settings completed, you just select OK and create your local file. The tool is going to, uh, on its own, go and pull the data that, that we're interested in um, including and within just um, a short amount of time it's going to create that local file as you can see here so local files have been created now the next step of course is to take this local file and attach it to Panorama's Google Docs application so to do that we're going to go back to uh, Google and I'm going to go back uh, to my Google Docs homepage just so we can create a new spreadsheet here. Now we can see there is no data here. We only have one sheet. But I'm going to go ahead and insert a gadget. Following the same steps as we looked at a minute ago. But now that when we get to this point that it's asking us where the data resides, I'm going to select other data sources. I'm applying and closing. And Once again, I'm going to move this to its own spreadsheet. Okay, so now what we need to do is tell the tool which data sources we want to use. Now we've decided to use local cubes and I have a few of them listed here, but in your case, if this is the first time to make the uh, cube attachment, you just simply follow the on-screen um, wizard, select the local file from your file system, and you import it. As you can see, I've already imported this file, so I'm not going to overwrite it. I'm just going to select it here. And that's really the only difference between using a spreadsheet and uh, connecting to SQL Server Analysis Services data. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing as we did before, put some data on columns as well as on rows. And I'm going to finish, click the finish button. So now I have my SQL Server Analysis Services data within the Panorama Analytical Tool in Google Docs where I can collaborate with ease. Once again, all of my 
data that uh, is not on the cross tab is actually within the filtered by area and my, my uh, cross tab is of course fully functional here. Okay, so let's take a look at a second way of collaborating. I'm going to first go back to my um, home screen within iGoogle and add a second tab. I'm going to call this uh, tab um, My BI Data. And there's no components here yet, but I just did that to create a placeholder for the components that we're about to add. So if I come back here to uh, my spreadsheet now and I click this Add Gadget to iGoogle link, then I'm going to actually add a component to my BI Data um, tab, which contains a fully functional uh, uh, panorama analytical tool. So I can do things with this. For example, I could um, select the data once again that I'm interested in in looking at. I'm going to just select some data here. Um, of course this is a much smaller version of the um, tool so I'll need to make some aesthetic changes to much better use my screen space. And I'm just going to show the chart. So eventually we'll get this to a point where it has data that we're interested in and maybe others would be interested in reviewing as well. Um, one nice feature here is, um, I'm sorry, let's see here. There's the ability to actually um, update this, this um, component on a schedule. So if you had some data that maybe was attached to a cube that was being updated regularly, you can actually update this dashboard regularly as well. Um, but any, if you, once you do get this uh, tab to a point where you're ready to share, then you just use the, once again the share option within the iGoogle um, page. I'm just going to share and I'm selecting the component that I want to share. I may have four, five, six or more different components here and I send out an email that um, uh, will give people permission to view that tab. So I said um, it's a second way of sharing. You can imagine that you could actually create a dashboard type environment here with multiple tabs and many different layouts of your um, uh, your BI data and quickly share that with the people that you feel like need to have the information. 